Unfortunately, on the last passage, I lost my water bucket. You know the thing you just toss over the side to pick up a little extra water on from the sea to clean your deck? In one way, it's a reminder to follow your instinct because just before it was getting really dark, I noticed it wrapped around the cleat only twice or one and a half times, and I thought I should give it another wrap. And of course, the next morning, it was gone because I didn't. Claimed by the sea, taken out by a wave. It was really kind of a bummer because that water bucket was awesome and it had lasted for seven years, been great the whole time. I guess one good way to look at it is, well, I get to make a new one and I could probably make it better than the last because that's the way it seems to work. The design of this bucket came from Lynn and Larry Party that they wrote up in magazines and books, I think, you know, a long time ago. Ironically, they ended up settling where I am right now, at Kau wow Island, a little north of Auckland, New Zealand. So I'll take the opportunity to make a new bag for me and show you the design. The key is it's soft and not too big, so it works great whether you're underway, flying and in fast along the water, or when you're stagnant still like this at Anchorage. So let's go down below, I'll show you, and then I'll show you how it works. The material I used to make this thing includes three strand line about that long, about this much of it. Um, an old sail bag. So I've made over, over the last 10 years, I've made three of these. One of them was with Dacron from an old sail. That worked okay. The other one was from like the kind of material sombrella, like thick canvas that you'd use for um, uh, sail covers. This is an, a sail bag. Not, it's like heavy nylon, so we'll try nylon. I have a feeling this won't last as long as thick sail cover, but um, it's a good and supple. We'll try it. You're also going to need uh, lead weight. Get a Foster's beer can, the old, those big like oil can size Foster's beers, and the bottom of it is this shape. So you can heat up some of those wheel weights for cars that you find on the side of the road and pour that in to the bottom of the Foster's oil can and you end up with this. Then you're going to want to dig a hole. So this is one hole dug in it. I'm going to dig another hole in here like this with an old screwdriver. There was a time for a period I would ride the push bike everywhere and look on the road for the lead tire weights for the wheels for balance and they're all over the road. So I ended up with something like this with two holes that we'll use to weigh one side of the bucket down. I wouldn't recommend staring at the road while riding your bike too far too much because eventually it hit me that I was spending more time looking at the road than the surrounding cars and not running into them. Another thing is for a handle, maybe a smaller, any kind of thinner, smaller line. For tools, you'll need like a screwdriver a knife to cut, um, some scissors, you need some scissors, and you know the thickest line that will fit through the eye of a needle that's just not too big and fat. So look for a big eye and the thickest line because that seems to be the first to always go is the, the, um, the thread. So for the end of this three strand, I'll put a little bit of tape around each of the three. Any kind of slippery tape will work. So now with this end taped off, we'll measure the diameter of the bucket to be the width of our hand. And then from that point, we'll measure four finger lengths. 
One, two, three, four, and cut it. And let's do the same thing with taping off these three ends. So let's go do the same thing as far as marking the inner diameter. And we should have a point where we've got about two fingers on each side. I'm marking both lines all the way around. So basically now we, want, we have our circumference line marked in one spot. And we're going to weave this line into here, and then we'll weave this line into here. Until basically you end up with something like this as the rim for your bucket. We'll take these bits of tape off and be done with it. So now with our rim complete, we're going to use it as the measure for cutting our bag. I'm going to add a bit more pen here. So now we're going to use this to mark the sail bag. To measure a, a square out of this material. So we'll go from our mark on that edge and we'll roll around till we get back to our mark. And put a mark on this edge. And then we'll do the same thing, roll around on that edge, and where we hit our mark, we'll mark this material. Let's measure this side from mark to mark, put another dot, and we'll double check. This should be about the same. Going to that mark, looks good. So we have four, all four sides or their circumference of this. Then we'll cut, our, cut out our square. So this is our sides. We're also going to need a piece for our bottom. So let's take this and we'll put our circle around here. And we'll draw around it. Just trace around the edge. So we have something like that. Now we're going to want to cut this out. We're going to cut out our circle to be, let's add a lot of fingernail hem width. We'll cut to the outside of that circle by about the distance of a fingernail. So we end up with something like this. So the distance or the material between our line and the edge is the hem. We'll sew into the line. But first we're going to sew this. We're just going to take two sides first. We'll put our inside. This material looks like it has a shiny inside and a darker outside. We're going to put the, the shiny inside to the outside for now. And we're going to take some thread, enough to go the distance twice, maybe a bit more than twice. And then we'll sew this up. Basically we're just going to loop around from one end to the other and back again. So we'll loop around like this and we'll just keep going from this corner to the other corner on this one side. So after looping around like that I'll go in and out kind of between the old stitches. So I'm sure there's many ways to do it but the end result for me was something like this. 
Now what we're, we'll do is we're going to turn this inside out halfway. So now we have these two ends matched up together where we are going to snake our rim. So now we have our bag with our rim around the top and at the bottom we have two edges. Let's line up our two seams and the two tops and then we'll take our round bottom so that we can see our mark, that round mark in the middle, and we'll sew the same way we did before into our line, and at the top we'll just wrap around like this. Such that we're lining up our three tops and we're sewing into our line. We'll go all the way around. And then I'll do the same thing again like before, where I'll go all the way around the same stitch. I'll retrace the same stitch, but doing a straight stitch. like this. So you end up with a bottom like this. You know, the round stitch around the hem and then a straight stitch through the line. And then we turn that back. And we've got the starting basis for our bucket. Once we have it evened out, Let's mark our, this is our thick part of our knot in the rope on the bottom here. So let's have that be the top and this is where we're going to put our lead. And on the ends here are where we're going to put our handle. Let's grab this. This is a smaller three strand where we'll use it to put in the handle. Let's cut. Just cut a little hole on the edge close to our three strand. And poke it through. We're going to do it on both sides. So now we have our handle snaked through our sides. Just small holes cut, cut in. And I'm going to use this three strand and weave it just like we did the rim. So splicing this way is actually e easier than the loop because you're just going into itself once. So now we've got our rim and our handle. We want to take the same, this is where the line is thick in our rim where we spliced it. We'll take that same thick part, we'll even it out and we're going to want to stick our weight in there. So we're get basically just going to sew one hole in our weight to the rim and the other hole on the inside of the bucket wall like this. So you end up it with it basically just looped around through the two holes on the rim. So in the water this will sink and this will float. So probably to keep the rim around the top we might go and add a couple little stitches here to hold it up. So now we have our bucket. What we will do is that what we will use is this is kind of just some line that came with that sail bag. The sail bag here. We'll just tie a little bowline in here. Hold it from the side. Maybe a little stopper knot on this end here. Let's see how it works. So now that it's done, I'll show you how easy it works at anchor.
you basically drop it in the water. The weight dips the front lip, not the back lip, and it picks up water easily. So you'd think that the holes in the bottom, the leaks would be a problem over time. You'll come to like it, I'll bet you. So that's it. This is Lynn and Larry's water bucket. I think they call it the better water bucket. Good luck making yours. Keep having fun. Over and out.